Hey y'all, this is Sarah. I hope everybody's doing good today and getting a chance to craft. I'm going to be crafting a little something with you. Um, this is a project that is kind of a spinoff of my rolling barn doors. Um, I posted photos of it in the group page. I hadn't done a tutorial, but some of you guys showed some interest. So in order not to duplicate that project exactly, I decided to do something a little different. I was inspired by something I saw at Home Depot and I want to try to get through this project in enough time. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you what our cuts are going to be so you can get one step ahead. Um, the first thing is going to be two strips of one and a half by 17 in black foam core. I've got two backer pieces in black these are about um 14 14 and a half i think by 17 remember i always do my backers slightly larger than i think i'm gonna need because the spacing when you line up your boards and your slats can change that in slight increments so I always go a slight bit larger and this is about 14 and a half by 17 so one full sheet of black um, should be able to get you where you need to be um, the next couple of cuts so they're pretty simple this is uh, this is a little different this is four inches wide by 17 inches long and then um, there's two of those and then there's going to be two at four inches by seven inches so those are your cuts and we'll slide these over the next thing that you're gonna need and guys in order not to blind you again with the whole mirror scenario there is a mirror in here this is one of the dollar tree mirrors um i think this is about an eight by ten frame the mirror measures out when you take it out it measures out at straight up seven inches and it's just um, about an eighth shy of being nine inches. So there is a mirror under there. I'm just keeping from blinding you guys. Um, one of the next things that you're going to need is just some, um, Dollar Tree self-adhesive, um, pearls. Doesn't matter what color we're going to be painting over those. Something else that we're going to be using is, this is in the party aisle at Dollar Tree. These are some of the little party favor yo-yos. Um, we're going to be using one of those, and I'll show you how to take it apart. You're going to need some hot glue, and you're going to need some of the medium size kind of popsicle sticks. And let me show you for comparison. Um, this is one of the, like, normal size. This is, like, a next size up. And then there is like this giant size. We're going to be using this kind of medium size. This one is a Dollar Tree one. You'll need something sharp to cut these with. Um, I'm just going to show you how to cut them with scissors. I do have a tool for that, but I'm just going to use scissors for this. And you'll need something sharp to cut a plastic piece on your yo-yo. I'm just going to be using... Um, a pair of wire cutters so I think that's everything uh, of course your paints whatever paint that you want to do this project in whatever wood tone that you want to do this project in I've already painted mine out um, to be one step closer there are plenty of videos already listed and tutorials listed for different paint colors different stain colors just go in and find which one that you really like and and we'll match your decor and do that one. Um, the only paints that we're really going to need are some paints to finish out your edges now. And then some black chalk paint to paint some of these things. So, to go ahead and get started, I'm going, I'm going to dismantle some things. So, this Dollar Tree mirror, this is how they come. They have these little tab things that you just bend back. You pop out the backing. You're going to pop out your mirror. I just, that is why I did not want to 
have a mirror shining in your eyes. Put your frame and backing aside. I'm sure that you guys can come up with a craft that you can do later with these. I'm just going to put this to the side. I only want the mirror out of this. And Dollar Tree has a couple different size mirrors, as a matter of fact. Let me show you that. I'm going to hold this one upside down so it doesn't blind you. Well, that's just the reflective plastic. However, um, you can see the size difference on this. I'm using the smaller rectangle one. You could use either one and adjust it to your size. So, that's dismantled. I'm going to put it to the side. Dismantling one of these yo-yos. Now, the bigger yo-yos unscrew. And you can get them apart like that. This little guy does not unscrew. It kind of is popped into place. So, we're going to kind of pry something in there. I'm going to spin this out a little to try to loosen that up. The hardest part is getting a grip on those rounded edges. So the string is in there. We're going to go ahead and pull that out. And you'll notice that this is what the inside looks like. So I'm going to go ahead. There's styrofoam stuck in there. I'm going to go ahead and take my um, wire cutters and I'm just going to pop that off so that it's flat. Now, these are going to be black, and I'm going to tell you a quick thing that I prefer to do. I like, anytime I'm painting plastic, I like to go ahead and do um, a light coat of spray paint first as my base coat to that plastic, and then my other paint seems to stick better. So, my spray paint go went on this plastic really shiny. I went back in with my chalk paint and painted a layer of black chalk paint over it so it almost had um, a, it had a more matte texture. But this is what it's going to look like when you take it apart. I went ahead and already painted mine. So I'm going to put these aside now that you know how to take that apart. That you would already go ahead, paint, let it be sitting to the side and drying. Which is what mine is doing right now. So, I'm going to pull out some scissors and my popsicle stick. And I'm going to show you both of these tools or two ways that you can cut this. So, I have this little miter shears tools that I got on Amazon. I'll have the link for that. This thing is great because you can get angles and everything else. I'm not measuring this out really. I'm eyeballing it. I'm going to cut out this rounded tip. And it just pops right off. So, and I'm going to show you how this works with scissors. You can do it either or. Scissors definitely make me work for it. Um, so, once we've got that done, I'm going to do two popsicle sticks like this. And the third one I'm going to do like this. And then I'm going to cut it right in half. And mine ended up being about two and a half inches. Those edges, those sharp little corners and edges... I'm ultimately going to want this to look like a piece of flat iron or wrought iron or something like that. Um, it's just going to look like black iron. So I kind of want to knock a little of that sharpness off. And I'm going to move these out of my way. So... Once I have that done, the next step is going to be using my little pearls to kind of embellish this little thing. And this particular set of pearls, they are on a, a line. I don't know if you can see that. They're on an adhesive running line where you pull a full line off. So in order to just get individuals... I come in with my craft knife and right on each side of that, I'm just going to notch into that little adhesive line. And for this particular one, I'm going to need three. So I'm going to pop underneath there, pull one of those off, and I'm going to come up in the center about, probably about a quarter of an inch up. And you can eyeball this to your liking. Um, 
and space it out whichever way you want to. So once I had this done, I lined all my sticks up so that I would make sure that they were all kind of even in the same. And I did one probably about an, um, an inch away from that, maybe a little more. And then I did one at the top, roughly about an inch down, um, give or take. And as you're laying your project out and see how this does, you can always decide where this one is going to go. Once they were all laid out like that, I did this set like that. I also did another set, and I may or may not use these, the other set that I did, but I did want to show you what I did with them to have them as uh, an extra embellishment. It's not on my inspiration piece, but you know how it goes with inspiration pieces. You always try to find a way to make it your own. So on the short ones, you're going to be doing the same thing, kind of round off those sharp little corners any of the fraying of the wood pieces and I went in and put one on each end so these are just like a smaller decorative version so I did one on one end probably about a quarter of an inch up right in the center now on my barn doors I did more than this um, but I used, a, I was able to use a wider popsicle stick. This one was a smaller one, so I felt like just one in a single line was good. So the next thing would be to use your chalk paint um, or your acrylic paint or whatever paint you prefer to use on crafts like this. Um, and we're going to paint these out. And I'm just going to kind of paint one of them really quick. So this is just my Waverly chalk and ink which is the color black and I've got a little brush I did front backs sides edges I did around the pearl areas really really well um, if you get really good coverage on your first layer you really only need one layer that's what I love about this this paint it's so heavily pigmented even on this really absorbent wood so you can pretty much see that that's what I did. I did both sides so that there was no chance of any of that light color wood showing through. I let them dry. And now I'm going to show you what my end results were. So we have two of the full size ones with just the tips bumped off. And then two of the little half size sticks. And I'm going to slide these out of the way so I don't get paint everywhere. And that's all I did for these. Once you get these done, go ahead and set them to the side. Let them be drying. And I'm going to put these pieces that I just got wet over here to draw. I'm going to slide these out of the way because we will be adding these pieces last. So by the time we're through with this, they'll definitely be dry enough to use. I love chalk paint for that very reason. Well, I love chalk paint for a lot of reasons, but that quick dry time, I definitely love. So I'm going to move these out of the way. And the next part is relatively straightforward. We're not even going to have to do any miter cuts on this because the inspiration piece was not mitered. And I'll be posting that in the group. I still don't know how to post my inspiration pieces in my video. So, sorry about that. Okay, so I'm using two backers because I want some thickness to this. Um, you know, I want some beefiness to this. Now, I'm not going to glue these backers together yet because I'm going to have to trim each one of them down. So, for now, I'm only going to hold one backer up here. By now, you should have your pieces painted. So, ta-da, through the magic of, I did these way ahead of time. Here are my pieces. And um, if you've already messed with these doing the backer kind of things, you'll understand that sometimes your measurements can adjust just with your spacing. So, always go a little wider on your backer. 
So I'm going to come in here with my mirror. And so we can see its placement on this black. This is definitely one of those ones where I'm glad I'm using black backers. I'm using two of them because I want the thickness and I want the support to this mirror because this is a bigger mirror than some of the other projects I've done. You at least want to line it flush on one side so that you're only trimming from the other. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Before I get my mirror aligned and everything, I'm going to go ahead and do my alignment for this piece here. I'm going to be using just hot glue. These are the Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree hot glue sticks. There's nothing special about them. They're not um, any particular type. I know that they have glue sticks for fabrics and this and that. These are just regular old glue sticks. I just use a lot of it. So all of my sides, all of my edges, everything is all nicely already done on these. So I don't have any white showing through. I'm using the black background on this one because I don't want any white poking out around that mirror. I'm trying to slide this as flush as possible. Okay. Now you can see this is where I'm going to end up trimming. So this is going to be, I'll have two sides that are really flush and then two sides I'll trim off of. So I'm going to go ahead and get this portion lined up. And measure out your mirror to get your sizes. These are not a guarantee. I really, plan seeing out that mirror, thought it was going to be a full um, nine inches down and it honestly was like eight hair off so all of these measurements are definitely subject to a little bit of adjustment for your own project so I've got that really squished into place I'm gonna bump my mirror up there I'm gonna move this around I'm so glad that I remembered to cover the mirror or do something with the mirror so they don't blind everybody I'm gonna come in really heavily get this one in place this one is so easy to frame out because it's not using a miter cut and that's exactly how the example was I almost dropped that would have glued it to my floor okay so I've got this one whole area completely flush everything is flush around my mirror so I'm gonna go ahead and pull my mirror out of place so I can get it glued down. I'm going to keep this black sheet on it and I'll pull it off last. That way maybe nobody goes blind. I'm sorry guys. I have to have the lighting. The, the lighting that you see glaring out. No kidding. That was not here for filming. That has been in my craft room. Because that is the only way I can craft. I have to have a lot of lighting. Okay, so I have it where I can just pop that up. I'm not going to get any fingerprints everywhere, so that's nice. So, I'm going to come in here. Definitely going to want to try to get close to these edges, but not too far up. It'll squish up around your mirror. That's my technical term. It's going to squish up. I'm going to put quite a bit of glue here get fancy with my design because it is holding this mirror in place the mirror is not very heavy though it's a very thin mirror by the way it's not near as thick as the little four inch square ones so i'm gonna try to slide this guy in place no no you wait till i get you there Okay, you heard that. It popped right down in its spot. Hopefully, I don't have a gap up here. Let me check. Nope. Perfect. So, that's in its place. Went a little crazy down here with the glue, but... I just... I prefer hot glue for the foam core crafts. I really do. Guys, if you've... If you've had an incident blow up on you, 
with using those heavier, um, really smelly caustic glues. You'll know why I kind of feel this way. Okay. And it fits in there just snug as a bug. Look at that. Okay, so that's where we're at at this moment. So now you've got a pretty beefed up kind of mirror here. This is a pretty good size now. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my cutting mat. I want to go ahead and trim this edge down so that I can put the next layer on. It's easier to trim through one of these layers at a time than it is trying to do both of them at once. You guys know me. I prefer my razor blade. You trim it out any which way you have found does your best cutting. And I don't know that I'm going to be able to stay in frame for this, but we're going to try. So I'm lining that pretty flush. I'm always going to start up above here so that I can get good pressure going before I ever hit. And I can't see what I'm doing. I'm going to have to slide a little closer. Well, I skimmed the edge of that one paper thin. Has anyone else noticed that the black is not always as easy to cut as the white foam core? Same brand. The black just doesn't seem... I don't have as much luck with it. So we're going to go back in with those edges. We'll be tapping a little paint in on them. I'm going to show you this real quick. If you haven't caught me do this in another video, if you get something jagged, if you did not hit that well, very lightly, run your sanding block. This is just a Dollar Tree sanding block down that edge. And you see that I just cleaned that off really nicely. So, I'm going to go ahead and get this bottom edge. Let me grab my blade again. Okie dokie. Starting up here, I want to try to dig in before I ever get there. I'm at a much better angle now. Now we're cooking with gas. Okay, so we've got our nice smooth edges. We're going to do the exact same thing again. We're going to glue this other backer, and I'm doing this for thickness. You could very easily just leave it at this thickness if you want it to. I like my pieces a little beefy. I wanted to show you this step first. If you don't want to go this far, don't do the extra backer. But now you start looking at that kind of thickness, and from the side, that looks really nice. So my next part would be to adhere this down and trim this out also. So let me do that really quick. I'm absolutely gonna glue the daylights out of this, try to get close to my edges. It's hard doing a big stance like this sometimes because your glue wants to dry before you ever get to the other side. So I'm going to kind of slide this into place here. I'm using my fingers to feel it flush along my edges. There we go. I've got a nice thickness there. Love it already. It's so lightweight even with that mirror in there. Okay, and get this to an angle where I can try to get it cut really clean. Now it's getting tricky because there's three layers and I'm at an angle that I can't see good. So I'm going to hope that I got that. 
I didn't. Let's try it again. Guys, I usually don't have this much trouble, but I do, I do tend to struggle a little more cutting the black ones. Let me find where it's not gripping into that. See, I may need a new blade. I'm always saying to keep my blade fresh, and here I am struggling. There we go. I am certainly have to clean that up a little better when I'm at an angle that the camera is not in my way. So, that would be where we're at, guys. I'm sorry I did not do a better job for you. It's such a weird angle, and I need every bit of arm length. Okay, so here's where we're at. I'm going to try to speed through. Hopefully, this does not end up being two parts. I want you to see how cute this is when it's finished. So, I'm going to pull over some of my goodies here. So, I've got these little guys. The two... The two bolt oh we've got to hurry up and paint the other ones so my little black strip the one and a half by 17 these guys you're gonna glue these together and create one solid piece like this once you do that go in with your black paint your black ink and your Waverly clear wax and do your edges. You are going to find that that black does not match your foam core. Paint one side of that foam core until you get one solid piece and you'll see. I'm going to show you real quick. Guys, I'll lie to you. That is an inch and a quarter. You can see that black is a different color. But if you run your, your ink slash clear mixture over it like we do with other things, it will even out that color so that you can have not nice dark edges. The entire front facing is dark. So you get one really nice piece. For the sake of time, I've already done it. So this piece is going to go up here and you see I've got like a little bit of overhang here. And we are going to bring these guys in. Your two prong area is going to go down onto your wood surface. So I'm going to try to turn this to a direction where I can really get to it. And because I've got mine three thick and this is too thick, I'm going to wedge this spare piece down here just to help hold it up until I get these glued. So y'all know that I'm not super huge on forcing you to measure. If you want to measure, you're more than welcome. I'm going to use the eyeball method here. So I've got my alignment pretty much where I think I'm going to want it. I'm going to go ahead and glue down this side. Now I'm going to tell you, Work fast. Don't go super heavy with your glue. You can melt this foam really easily. I'm going to try to hit where that paper center is to get most of my glue on there to attach it up here. I don't want it to melt on me and end up um, causing the inside foam to look strange. So I'm going to go in, get that in place. I put glue all the way down it and it was not necessary. So I'm going to wipe that off. If you've got any glue, if you can remove it while it's still hot, please do because it will pull up your paint finish. If you've recently done your painting. Okay, so now you can see that's pretty flush. We are going to come in and kind of measure this out. I've got glue strings all on my fingers. So, one more of these little strips so I can kind of hold my little, my little pieces in place here. I want to see where this hits right about the center of my little circle. 
And if you notice, I'm going to use the side that kind of has this cool pattern to it. And I'm going to look there. There's a center point right there. I think I'm going to do it where that little design shows through. So I'm going to blob some glue right there in that center. I'm going to line that pearl up with what should be that center. And I'm going to let that dry for a second. And I'm going to do the other one the same way. This one is a little easier where we clip that off. Uh, it gives you a little more, a little bigger spot to glue to. So I've loaded that up with some glue. I'm going to get it kind of where it's got that X pattern across it. Get my little pearl where it looks like it's centered to that roller there. Hold that in place. We'll let this one dry while we apply this one. So the thing about putting the little roller on first is it's going to allow me to kind of figure out how far down I can come on this. So I'm going to come in right back here. If you can see that. I don't need this now. I'm going to come in right back here. I'm going to hit it with some glue and then I'm going to go all the way down. But this part is going to glue to the top of here and it's glued to this popsicle stick. I'm going to show you what I mean. So I'm going to come in right there, load that area up, and come all the way down. Try to make sure that you get it where it's not going to seep out because, like I said, the glue will absolutely pull up your paint. And I just did that very thing. So I'm going to take this popsicle stick and kind of get that off while it's still hot. I think I just made it worse. We shall see. I'm going to hide that with a little bit of... Oh, that pulled it pretty much off. That works. This may go in and get that a little better. I'm telling y'all to be careful with the glue, and I turn right around and do exactly what I told you don't do. Okay. Same thing on the other side. We're going to hit right here. Pull that glue down. This is just going to reinforce our little yo-yo in place from the back where you can't see it. Ta-da! Ta-da! Now, we are going to have this adorable barn door style window. Now, it's a, beef, a big, beefy kind of piece. These extra pieces, I made them to show you how to dress this up to embellish it a little you don't have to put them there and switch them out how you want to do it you can come down here and add anywhere you want to however you might want to embellish that with and there you go be sure to paint out your sides your back is entirely black because we use black backer and when i go to remove this you guys will see in the photo this is going to be fantastic I hope you guys think that is absolutely as cute as I think it is. I'm going to glue down my little embellishment pieces. My inspiration did not have any extra embellishment to it, but I can't leave well enough alone. I hope you guys like this. I hope it gives you a little inspiration and you kind of get an idea how to do one of the barn door type roller systems. This is a little different than the one I did with my big barn doors. But I wanted you to have something to kind of start on. Let you look at that. Clean off your glue strings. How cute is this, guys? And there you go. I hope you enjoyed doing that with me. I certainly enjoyed it. I'm going to clean up my glue get mess, paint my sides, and get some cute pictures of this. Have a great week. Jump over to the Facebook group page if you're not on it. Um, Peppermint Cactus on Facebook. Check it out. There's a giveaway there. Go take a peek at it, and I will be talking to you guys.